All right, this is a painting tutorial, a watercolor painting tutorial on how to draw and paint a tropical bird. All right, we're going to do this toucan together. Um, so for this project, you're going to need paper, pencil, eraser, sharpener, and all of that. Um, also a watercolor set and a paintbrush, um, a watercolor set and a paintbrush. So let's get started. All right, for our toucan, we're going to work in portrait. So we're going to have it standing up tall. Uh, and don't forget, whenever we do a drawing, painting tutorial, when we start with a drawing, you draw it light until you get it right. Um, mine's going to appear a little darker for the video, but you need to draw it lightly because you will, you will need to erase, okay? So lots and lots and lots of artists and, and people who draw typically take what they're going to draw and break it into simple shapes, all right? So for our toucan, we're going to, you would think that we would be using circles and everything because, I mean, you know what a bird looks like, but for this one, we're actually going to break it down into rectangles and squares, okay? So making sure that we're not starting too high on our paper or too low, um, our toucan is going to take up about this much space, okay? Um, you also don't want to make these initial squares too big, these first couple, um, because you, you'll just run out of space. So if you want to watch this part and then rewind and then do it with me the second time you watch it, that that's probably best. And in fact, that's how I learned a lot of the time. Um, so to start out, I'm going to start kind of towards the top of the paper and I'm going to draw a line, a straight line over about, I don't know, about like that, all right? We need to leave a whole bunch of room on this side for kind of the back of the bird, um, but this is ultimately gonna be the top of the head and the beak, okay? We're gonna turn that into a rectangle, okay? We're gonna turn that into a rectangle. So I'm drawing lightly. Um, I'm not particularly worried at this point about straight lines. I mean, if you want to use a ruler, you can. Now, we need to divide this into thirds. Okay, divide this into thirds. So I don't know. Let's I'm gonna get another pencil. Let's say right about the right, right about there. All right, on this back third, we're gonna draw a straight line. So we're gonna divide, we're gonna divide that rectangle into two thirds, one third. Didn't think you'd be doing math. Um, all right, so this is the head and the beak. It's what will be the head and the beak. So let's draw what's gonna be the body and the back. So we're gonna continue this line down. Meh, I don't know, right about here. Um, you may have to kind of mess around with your proportions. That's all a part of the game, all right? So I'm gonna draw a rectangle, pretty good size coming right down off of this third. So it actually kind of looks like two intersecting rectangles. Um, and then we're gonna draw another rectangle. Now this one's gonna be a little bit thicker, just a little bit thicker right back here, okay? And it's gonna line up right down at the bottom. Bam. So right now it doesn't look like we're doing a bird. It looks like we're doing Tetris, but we are doing a bird. Okay, so now that we've got it blocked out, and some of you might be able to see beak, head, body, back, you know, the feet will come down here. And we're gonna draw a limb. And I'm gonna show you how to draw some tropical leaves um, rounds about. Um, let's start carving it out of these basic shapes, okay? So let's start with the head. Let's start with the head. And it's actually gonna be relatively simple. So on this end, we're gonna start with the beak. Um, I'm going to go, I don't know, just a little ways up, not too awful much up, and I'm going to draw a curved line that's pretty steep, okay? I mean, it's pretty steep. It's pretty steep, All right? Just like that. So this is going to be that top part of the beak, that top part of the beak. Um, now let's draw the back of the head. And so for the back of the head, essentially, we're just going to kind of round off. We're going to kind of round off this this pointy, pointy end, all right? Um, you guys see it yet? Beak, head. All right, let's draw a couple more lines over here on the beak. So we are going to extend this line a wee bit out of the, out of the, the, um, the box, just a little bit. And then, you know, the beak is made up on the top and a bottom beak. I, I don't know what the technical term is. Um, but then we're gonna draw that line right here and that's gonna help us, um, 
that's going to help us. And actually, it goes all the way back here, all the way back here. So top beak, bottom beak, and then we'll do the bottom beak right here. The eye is going to go right about here. We might erase that. We might erase that and, uh, and, and do it again. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, okay, so let's carve out a couple of more little shapes, uh, and then we'll start adding some detail. So this right here is going to be the chest of our bird right here. So we need to draw a curve line that's going to kind of carve out where the body meets, you know, where the legs go. So in this rectangle right here, I don't know, find half, about half, a little less than half, and you're going to draw a curved line, just kind of like that, all right? Just kind of like that. All right, uh, and then we're gonna draw another curved line and it's gonna be kind of like that. So it's not quite as curved. It's not quite as curved. And this, if you want to, you can kind of draw the circle. Um, that's where the legs are going to go. That's where the legs are, or the, the, the claws are gonna go. All right, um, so let's kind of, let's draw where the back of the bird is gonna be. So in this rectangle, I don't know, go down just a little bit just a little bit you can kind of you can kind of see the proportion starting to 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 come out and I'm going to draw another curved line right down here okay similar to that right again draw it light until you get it right and this one is going to extend all the way down like that um, this is going to be the tail right down here so let's draw the other part of the tail and if you'd like you can go ahead Let's see, it'll be a right about here. We may end up erasing those, just so you know. Um, we may end up erasing those. That's where the claws are gonna be. And we need to kind of figure out where this back leg is gonna go. Again, we might end up erasing it, but, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this. So right from this back leg, you can see where this leg is gonna go eventually. Um, but right from this back leg, let's draw another curved line right here and right here, all right? So that gets us the head, tummy, back, and feet. And then to complete those tail feathers, which we will draw here in just a second, that is gonna be a curved line coming right out from where those feet end, all right? I know that I'm moving quickly. Oop, I was a little sloppy there. But the beautiful thing about this video is that you can stop and rewind, all right? Let's define these shapes even just a little bit more, okay? So right up here in the head, I mean, usually birds, well, I mean, there probably are some birds, I'm saying usually, uh, don't have a flat part right here. So let's round this out and make it look a little more natural. We're actually, for this one, going for a little more realistic than we've done in the past. Um, so I'm going to take this head part right here, and I'm going to extend it out. And right about here, you can see it kind of mimics the eye, all right? I'm gonna curve it in, and that's gonna be the crown, the very, very top of the head. And right from that point, that's where I'm gonna draw, and I'm gonna connect my beak, okay? If you kinda of see that. So I kinda of made almost like a bird, like one of those really simple birds that we draw in the sky right here. Now, there is a line because the beak is separated. You know, there's beak and then feathered head. Uh, so let's draw that. That is actually kind of a continuation of this line that we started right up here from the head. And it's going to go down just like here. And it's going to meet right where we drew that beak line. Yeah, yeah. And then we need to draw that bottom jaw. And it is kind of like, I don't know how to describe that. It's like a backwards J kind of. So this right here essentially is like a stretched out S. All right. It's like a stretched out S. And then that gives us the ability to complete the bottom of the beak. All right. I'm going to erase that right down here. You can kind of see where it doesn't line up exactly. So I'm going to erase it. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we have our beak. We have the beginning of our head. Let's kind of sculpt out the body right here. It, ne it needs a little bit of loving. So right here, which I guess is the, which is the neck? Well, I don't know. But if you look at our original box, it's right next to this dot. We're going to draw, we're going to just kind of kind of start sculpting it out, almost like we're working with clay. So it's kind of similar to this shape, um, but it goes the other way. So right from that point, I'm going to draw a small curved line in, and then I'm going to draw a curved line out. 
just like that. It's actually kind of almost exactly the same. So this is kind of the chest, right? The front, the front of the bird, okay? And you're going to take, see this curved line where it ended? You're gonna take that curved line and you're gonna actually swoop it all the way inside the body. And that, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is gonna be the kind of foundation of the wing. All right, so you might need to go back and watch that again, but it's kind of a, it's like a swoop. I don't really know, it's like a, maybe it looks like a bottom of a stocking. I, mean, I got Christmas on the brain, Christmas on the brain. Um, all right, so, and then here in a second, we'll draw some of our feathers down here. Um, all right, let's work down here on the legs. We need to make those pop a little bit more. So right here, you see, uh, this doesn't look quite realistic right down here. Um, if, if I'll, I'll flash a picture of a bird, which you can see right now. Um, the legs kind of tuck in and then Z out. They kind of do a sh sh So we need, to, we need to get that drawn. So I'm gonna fall with my pencil down about halfway into this line right here. And from that point, I'm gonna draw, I don't know what that shape is. It's kind of like a swoop-de-swoop, -swoop, right? It's just ever so slightly curved. Um, ever so slightly curved. So remember to draw it light until you get it right. Uh, and that right there is gonna be where the body meets the leg, meets the leg. So let's draw the under, like the bottom of the leg and then we'll, we'll draw the claw and the branch that, that they're sitting on. Um, so right here from this point, you can kind of see where the box is. We're gonna draw another curved line. Whoop, oh, it's mostly straight actually mostly straight, and then we're gonna connect it right here. This is the bird's elbow, okay? <laughs> I'm sure there's like some technical aviary, a, aviary, 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 I don't know, term for that, but that's the bird's elbow. And then if you want, you can erase this little line right here, all right? And kind of smooth out that line. I might go back and do that here in a second. Um, we're gonna leave the feetsies be for right now, like the this circle part. Uh, but we need to kind of do the same exact thing. So we've got our elbow, okay? Now what I would like you to do right from the top of where we ended that elbow, draw, I mean, it's essentially like a straight line. It's a straight line down to connect where we've started our other leg, okay? Where we started our other leg. And if you want, you can go ahead and draw that line right there. And because of our work earlier, I know that this is gonna go right here. And then I need to draw one more elbow, just right there, all right? So we've got one elbow, two elbows, and then this is them tail feathers, them tail feathers. All right, um, let's look, we, let's go ahead and sculpt some of these tail feathers out. Okay, right down here. Um, and then we'll go back and add even more detail, including up here and in, and in the beak and stuff. Um, so birds have tail feathers and then they have additional feathers that kind of lay over them. Again, I'll show a picture right here using video editing magic. Um, I might even use some arrows to point at exactly what I am talking about. Uh, so we need to draw the feathers that are kind of under tucked underneath. And that is going to come right here to the point. I don't know, work your way up just a just a wee bit. And you're going to draw a sky. It's mostly a straight line. It's mostly a straight line. Um, and it's kind of going to be like a rounded rectangle at the bottom. All right? Rounded rectangle at the bottom. You guys see that? Rounded rectangle at the bottom. Um, let's draw... Let's finish these feathers up here. We'll come back to this part over here. Uh, but we've got, this is like, I don't know, the shoulder. And then we're gonna have some feathers that are gonna come down right here. So if you find the biggest, like the, the, the furthest bend out, you're gonna work your way up about halfway between the end and that biggest point. And you are gonna draw, it's actually, it's another straight line. It's another straight line, essentially. Um, and it's going to be, you guys know what a wing kind of looks like when it's closed, a rounded rectangle shape. You guys see that? I know, I know that I did that kind of fast. It's like a rounded rectangle shape, okay? Let me clean up some of these lines for you. And I'm actually going to erase some of those lines. And this is going to come, and this is going to connect 
up with the body, okay? So again, I found the furthest out bend right here, the furthest out bend, and then halfway between that bend and the outside or the chest of the bird, I started a line. Then I did, it's kind of like a, it's like a shark fin almost, I guess, if you look at it, a shark fin, a rounded triangle, and that's going to connect right back up here to the back of the body, okay? Let me clean up some of these lines. Boop, 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 yip -a yip -a, yip -a Whoop. All right, and just for some flavor, we're going to do some painting but you can add, man, sorry. Let me get those cleaned up. They're bugging me. Draw it light until you get it right, folks. Boom, all right. You guys should start to see a Boyd, a Boyd. And what we'll do, we kind of need that there's some, there's some feather action happening on the back. Uh, so to make this look, uh, again, a little more realistic. We're going to add, it's kind of like, it's like the back of the wing. So it's a similar to shape to right here, but it's just going to kind of stick out the back. All right. That's going to give our bird kind of the, and actually it needs to be moved up just a hair, just a hair. Yeah, there we go. Again, that's gonna that's gonna give this bird a little bit more of a realistic look, a little bit more realistic. Um, so we've started this right down here, but I wanted to get these done uh, before we added the other. So we gotta finish this these these tail feathers that are back behind. So just like this was a curved line, right from this point where that wing kind of little little bip um, sticks out, we're gonna draw a line, and mine goes off the paper. Um, but I think you can kind of see, so if yours is a little more centered than mine, you can see this shape that's created. It's, it's kind of like a slice, it's like a Dorito chip or a slice of pizza. Um, okay, let's do, let's add a little bit of details right up here. So again, we're doing a toucan and toucans have very distinct coloring and markings in their beak and, and, and in their head and stuff. Um, first thing is they have kind of a black uh, like a bean shape right on the tip of their beak. Um, and right where the beak meets the head, where it connects, uh, there's also some more black, um, I don't, I'm, sh I know that there's a term for them. I know that there's a term for them. I just know what it is. Uh, so, and this is just a curved line shape, nothing fancy. So we'll do one here. And this one, it has one down here on the bottom part of the beak as well. This one sticks out a little bit more right right here so again this kind of looks like a sunrise coming over a valley and these will be black which will which we will paint here in just <coughs> excuse me just a second um toucans have <coughs> woo, kind of a white um a white portion on the neck and in the top of the chest so we'll draw that um and that happens right below the eye so i'm going to start it's kind of like a heart shape. In fact, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. That's exactly what it's like. So I'm going to start, I don't know, like here's the point of the, where the beak, the two, the upper and lower beak meet. Oh, just a wee bit up from that. I'm going to draw a heart shape. Bam. Just like that. And it goes all the way down to the, to the chest of the bird right here. Bam. Okay. <coughs> We're rocking and rolling. Now, they also have some some kind of, uh, they have like some coloring around their eyes. They've got some orange around their eye. So this is actually the outline of the eyeball. So we need to put the pupil right in there. Uh, and I'm going to leave a very small bubble right in there to indicate where I'm going to leave it white. So I'm not going to paint in there because I want it to, you know, I want my toucan to be bright eyed and bushy tailed. And then right around the eye, there's another ring. So I'm just going to trace over right here. Boom, bada boom. And that will actually be orange, orange, as my child says. Uh, and just a couple of more things. They are, so the bird is beak, orange, white, black, and then there are some white 
feathers right down here. Um, and they're, again, they're kind of tucked up underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw kind of like a broken line right here. I don't really know how else to describe that. That's gonna denote where those black back feathers are. Um, and then this part right here is gonna be white. And then just for flavor, I'll add a couple of lines right down here. So uh, the only thing we lack is to add a little bit of shape right here because we've done all of this really lovely drawing and then we've got bam, 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 squares right there. Uh, so right here, I guess this is, wait, the, what did I say? Sh I don't know where the shoulder is. I don't know what this is. This is like the back, maybe like the back of the neck. I don't know. Um, it's going to be, and it, it, there's not really a good way for me to describe it, so I'm just going to kind of show you. It's kind of a loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loo. -de -loop -de -loop -de so you're going to go curve back like the back of the neck, and then you're gonna curve up to meet the head, okay? So it's kind of just like a noodle. I don't know, it's like a noodle. But noodles can be any shape, Miss Hall. I am aware, thank you. This is this is this shape of this noodle, right here. And so that gives that neck a little bit more shape. Now, weren't those squares helpful in laying it out? Uh, I'm telling you, and I'll tell you again, and we're gonna finish here in a second, uh, if you take the time to look at what you want to draw, break it down into different shapes, it really makes the rest of the drawing so much quicker and easier and not as hard on you. Um, all right, let's draw the branch that our, that our little, little, little guy sitting on. Um, it doesn't really matter how you draw the branch. Just know it's going to come just slightly under where we've ended, okay? And it's going to go completely through those circles because we're going to erase those circles here in just a second. So I'm actually going to start my branch right up here. And the way I draw branches is I just go for it. I don't really know how else to describe it other than just going for it. You can see I've tried to make it look a little natural because if you think about the like the, a branch, it's not perfectly smooth. Um, Typically, typically, I know some of you are like, but some of them aren't. Not all of branch, not most of them aren't. Uh, and then I'm going to draw the underside of the branch too. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner, right where my right where my boy bird, <laughs> right where my bird is. Um, all right, our very, 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 very last step. Well, uh, uh, not necessarily last last step of drawing, but one of the near last steps is to draw our claws, okay? Our, our feetsies on our bird. Um, the best way to do this is, so they've got, they grip it, right? They grip it. So it's kind of like this. So we're gonna be drawing, it's essentially like a half moon shape. It's a half moon shape of that uh, um, footsie grabbing on that branch. And we're only gonna see half one of the toes because the other toe is tucked behind the branch. So we really only have just, just a couple more things to do. So I'm gonna take my pencil and right along that circle that I drew, <coughs> woo, I'm gonna start carving out my claw. The only thing I can really tip I can give you is it is not a perfect circle. If you look, it's kind of got, think about knuckles, okay? So think about your knuckles as you grip something. <coughs> Excuse me, it is not a perfect circle. There's some bumps where your joints kind of jut out and that's what I've tried to show right here, okay? And again, too, so if you think about the outside, then you gotta think about the inside, right? The inside, so there's bumps and ridges. It's not a perfect circle. So I'm gonna start from the claw. A claw is sharp, right? <laughs> They're sharp on the end. And then from there, I'm gonna draw kind of these beefy little toes. I'm gonna draw, they're kind of like half circles, but it's meant to show the inside of the claw. And then for the other side, I don't have anything to do. I'm done. I, I, I'm done. Um, if you want, you can show kind of peeking out back behind there, the other, you know, the other uh, uh, talon or claw, but that is entirely up to you. Um, and then if you would like, some people like to erase as they go. Some people like to erase all at the end. It, it doesn't really matter. You can erase that branch that's sticking through. Um, oh, and the claw is separate from the toe right here. Rinse and repeat for the other one. So again, I'm gonna kinda not draw a perfect half circle, it's got some, it's got some joints, yeah? Then I'm gonna draw my claw. Then I'm gonna draw my meaty fingers. Bam! Other side. 
nothing, but if you want, you can draw that other, that other claw sticking out. And then erase if you see fit. Uh, I, it's looking pretty good. I'm actually really happy with it. Uh, just a couple more things. We need to draw just some lines right here to show uh, because you know birds have feathers. They have feathers kind of up to their elbow and then below their elbow is is kind of like a scaly, um, scaly kind of texture. So we need to draw a couple of lines to show us where the, you know, where the forearm and the, and the claws start and the feathered upper arm. So, leg I don't those are technically legs but you get you get what I'm trying to say uh begin so we're just going to complete that um now we are going to do some the toucans live in the rainforest if you uh forgot that I said that um and just in the background just so it's not just like a bird chilling and again a white void uh, we're going to draw some tropical looking leaves, some tropical rainforest looking leaves. And we'll just do a couple, again, just to make it look like a complete picture. Um, before I do that, I am going to erase some of these guidelines, all right? And before we paint, you're going to want to go through and erase a lot of them because watercolor paint, as some of you probably know or have experienced, um, it's so opaque, meaning that it's not like a solid block of color when you put it on. If you don't get all your pencil up, you will most likely see it back behind your bird, okay? So I'm gonna erase some of these lines. <clears throat> I'll go through and erase some of the lines in the bird here in just a second. Okay, okay, let's do those leaves. So uh, I'm going to do like a big one here, like a big one here, like a big one here, maybe a little one here. Uh, you can lay these out however you want, but this is just a uh, way that we can fill the fill the background up a little bit. Um, all of the leaves, or I'm going to show you how to do two, all of the leaves start with basic, the, they both start with the same shape. One of them just has a little bit more, uh, little extra stuff you do to it. So I'm going to do the first one right up here, and you're going to start with kind of like, I mean, it's a leaf shape, right? So it's a football. Think about a football. Um, comes to a point, but very, very rounded edges, very, very rounded edges. Now, instead of having, you know, footballs are the same on both sides, obviously, everybody knows what a football looks like. Instead of having it on uh, a point on each side, this is, it's kind of like an elephant ear plant. Some of you might even have some of these in your home. It's going to be a bump or a spade. Think of spades and, and playing cards, a bump and then another bump. Okay, so it's essentially two bumps. That's leaf right there. And then if you want, you can draw the vein, although we will be painting, we will be painting these. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna paint those, but you can absolutely do that. That that is that is leaf number one. Um, super, super simple. So you start out, one half of it is the shape of a football, and the other half of it is kind of like a, a I don't know, like a radio wave, a W that's not spiky. Oh, I don't, I don't know. There's a hundred different ways you can describe that. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to drew, draw, do one more. And this one starts out as the same shape. So you start out with a football. Okay. Start out with a football. And, and actually this one, you can see, see the, see the whole leaf. This one, I, the, the head's cutting it off. Uh, we're going to do a bump and then a bump. Yeah. Right there. Now this one, we're going to make it look, you know, some of you might even have ferns too. So the leaf shape is basically the same, but there's, there's individual little ribbed leaves that, that happen inside that shape. So to do that, we're going to use this outline that we created. Um, and what we're going to do from the, from the tip, we're going to go down a little, and then we're going to draw kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I did that a little bit more. I don't know what to. I don't know what to call that shape, like a non-pointy V. I did it a little too deep. There we go, just like that. Uh, and you're gonna just do these kind of. I don't know. It's like waves. I guess is a good way to describe it. I'm not sure. Um, just like this, all the way down, all the way down and then right here. All right, that is leaf type number two. And then what you'll do 
is that shell that we created, that outline for this leaf type, you'll then erase, right? Because you can see the gaps kind of in between all of these leaves and you can draw the branch that it's on. All right, so I'm just gonna very quickly add a couple more of these uh, rounds and rounds about uh, to get it going. So we're gonna start, let's do, let's do a pretty big one down here. We'll start with a football shape. This one will be kind of obscured a little bit. Then we've got our bump to bump right here, right below the feet. Uh, and let's make, let's make this one like this one. So we'll go like here, we'll go like here, go like here, right here. It's, it's important to be serious and make serious sounds when you're making art. Bop, 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 bop. And then erase. Like a bail, like this. Ooh, I like it. Uh, and then I just can't stop any leaves. So I'll do a couple of more down here. These are gonna be a little smaller. So we start, ooh, sorry. My brain short-circuited. Start with a football shape, do our Bump de bumps right here. We'll draw that right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an official art sound. Uh, man, I just I'm gonna do a whole bunch. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do them really fast. I'm gonna do them really fast because at this point you'll be uh, I'm gonna make these one of these. Um, <laughs> my brain my brain short circuited again. Like here, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bam. And we'll erase, I like these right here, this type. I like these two. Both of them have their merits. But these, I think, are a little a little more interesting only because they've got, they've got a little bit, they're, they're a little jazzy. Okay. Uh, and then we'll do a big old one right over here. And it'll be like back behind our friend's head. Like here. Um, I think, friends, it is time. We're going to erase some of these lines, but then after we do that, I think it's, oh, I don't want to erase that line. What are you doing, Miss Hall? Right here. Well, we need to erase these lines. So I'm just going through right now. I am just erasing those square lines. So those lines that we used at the beginning of the drawing to help us lay out our toucan. Um, that's what I'm erasing right now. You can also erase some, you know, if you've got some lines that need need to be tidied up a little bit. <clears throat> but it's important to draw it lightly because if you don't draw it lightly, as all of you have experienced, <coughs> um, as all of you have experienced, you can't, it's difficult to erase. I, I mean, it, it will permanently, permanently dent um, your paper. <laughs> so please, 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 please draw lightly. Um, like I said at the beginning. Okay. So, uh, next up we're going to, we're going to paint. Uh, you should have a watercolor set at home. Um, if you don't, I, like I said in the class announcement, you can come up to the school. I'll have some in the office. You or you and your parent, you or your parent can come up and grab one. Um, I'm just going to use this set with this brush. Uh, I, I don't, we don't need anything fancy. You'll need a water cup and a paper towel to get started. All right, I've got my paper towel. I have got my paint. Let me get this out of the way. I've got my water. Um, the paint sets that I provide have a paintbrush in them. Uh, they're not great, but you know, they'll, they'll work just fine for what we're doing. Now remember, there are two different types of watercolor. We've got cake right here or pan watercolors and then like liquid or tube watercolor. Um, if you haven't used your watercolor in a while, this, this is a brand new set, uh, you need to kind of moisten up the top. So I just take your brush. We are going to need for this one, we're gonna need black. We're gonna need brown. We're gonna need blue. We're gonna need everything. We're gonna need everything except purple, I think. We're gonna need green, okay? And if you'll notice, I'm rinsing my brush in between each of the colors, especially when I go to yellow, because that yellow will get kind of scuzzy. And I'm just putting, putting a little bit of water on top. I'm not drowning them. Um, so again, you need black, brown, blue, green, yellow, 
orange, orange, and red. Uh, purple, we don't really use purple. Uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, well, we might use a little bit. Oftentimes, purple and black, whenever you're painting a black figure, because this dude, all of this right here is going to be black. Um, purple and black are really well together to kind of show like some highlights and lowlights in black. Um, it, so it's not gray, okay? So it's not gray. Uh, it shouldn't take too long once you have your uh, once you have a little bit of water on your watercolor, uh, especially the sets that I provided. Now, my personal woo, my personal set it takes about thirty minutes, honestly, to 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 for it to kind of absorb in, so you can use it. Uh, but this set is just about ready to go now. We have a lot of different ways we can start this um, because we're going to have to let it kind of dry in between each take, okay? So I'm not going to sit here and, and make a three-hour long video, um, but you'll have to come back and forth this because I'm going to show you how to layer with watercolors for this awesome bird tutorial. Uh, so again, I'm just kind of looking at this. I need to go through and tidy it up a little bit. Um, I, I was a little heavy-handed with my pencil because I'm doing this for a tutorial, so it's a little smudgy right right down here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of erase it and get my pencil and just tidy it up a little bit. That way the paint has a nice, good, you know, nice, good surface to, to, to park it in. Let's see. Do I got my good? Let me clean these up a little. I can still see a couple. Of okay. We're going to call that good. You can take as much time as you want. Um, so because we're going to do this in stages, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to start in the background. Um, so I, I'm kind of imagining this. So the toucan sitting in the tree. So back here, we're just going to kind of do some greens and some blues. Uh, we're going to make a lime green, kind of a turquoise, and then we're going to use the green. And we're going to use the wet on wet technique, remember, which we covered in class. And that's where you put wet paint on a wet surface. And we're just going to kind of make it look like leaves that are fuzzy and kind of out of focus. We're going to leave our leaf buddies alone for right now. Um, I'm going to go remember to, uh, since we're about to get paint, we never pull paint directly from the pan to the paper. I, I, there are some videos that you'll see that'll do that. Um, it's difficult to control your color that way and you can make a boo-boo and then it's on your paper and then you can't fix it. So I always use either a painter's palette or watercolor sets have a built-in tray on the back. So what I'm going to do for the background, I'm going to get a little bit of green and I just wiggle my brush right on top of the paint and I pull over a pretty good amount. If you do this and it doesn't put any paint over here, you need a little bit of water on your brush, okay? You need a little bit of water on your brush. Um, there is no wrong or way, no wrong or right green, wrong or right lime green. Just kind of mix the colors and, and get what you like. So I've got just green. Now I'm going to do green. I'm going to do another puddle of green. I'm just kind of gently rubbing my paintbrush right on the top there, pulling it over here. And I'm going to rinse it really good because now I'm going to get some yellow. So I'm going to take yellow, get it on my brush, mix it. And before I get more yellow, I'm gonna rinse my brush. You might wanna make sure it's nice and clean because I do not want to get green in my yellow. I do not wanna get green in my yellow. And I will probably have to mix more paint um, knowing this because I've got a whole bunch of paper to cover. Uh, and then we'll do one more green and this green is gonna be a turquoise. So I'm gonna take my green right down here. Make that third puddle of green. Like da. And actually, I'm going to make this one a little. Ah! See, you got to be careful. It's okay. I'll get it out. Right here. I'm going to rinse it. Now, it's not quite as important when you go from green to blue because, I mean, blue is so much darker. So, I'm going to make kind of a turquoise color. So, for the background now, I'm, I'm going to go quick. I'm not looking for detail. And I'm just, I'm painting everything but my leaves and my bird. All right, everything but. So I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of water on my brush. Remember, watercolor needs water. If your color is too dark, you'll add more water. If your color is too watery and too light, you will add more color, more pigment. Uh, you can just kind of go, oh, it started. You can just kind of go crazy. So I'm going to add a little bit of water right here. Then I'm going to just start adding color. Ooh, here. I'll, add a, I'll, I'll go in and I'll add a little bit of water. And then using the same old dirty brush. Ooh, I'll add some of that. Ooh, I like that color. And then I'll paint over it with some water. There's no 
super duper technical technique that we're doing right here. Let's say I want a little bit more of that green over here. And I am letting the colors do their thing. I'm letting them mix. This is just water. I will often go back and forth and just use water. Just use water on a dirty brush. So uh, let's get a little bit of water up here. Let's do that little lime green. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Okay, just some water. I'm gonna spread that around. Bam. All right, you are gonna do these steps all throughout the back. So I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to sit here for 30 minutes. And you'll notice I go back and forth. I'll use all of my colors and I'll add more, I'll mix more. Um, so uh, let's go. Okay, now, once you've got the background done, you need to let it dry. You need to let it dry. Um, <coughs> if you're trying to get this done in a time crunch, um, a lot of artists will use a hair dryer, my, myself included, I've used a hair dryer to do this. Just be careful when you use a hair dryer. Make sure you hold it high up on low, uh, because if you hold it close and turn it on high, it'll, whew, it'll make all that paint spray all over and you'll have green everywhere you want. So if you're gonna use a hair dryer to dry watercolor, just be very careful. Make sure it's on low, it's nice and high. You know, you can always move it closer, um, but you can't undo paint splatter. So if you noticed, a couple of times throughout, even though it was sped up, it looked like I was dotting my paintbrush around. What I was doing was adding just pure water to create watercolor blooms. If you look right here, when you add pure water on top of a wet on wet painting technique, um, or just wet paint, and have to be necessarily wet on wet, just wet paint, uh, it'll create these blooms. And for our purposes for this painting, it's wonderful technique because it creates kind of these organic looking shapes. Uh, and that's what we're looking for, right? We're, we're trying to make this like an out of focus jungle background. So those blooms add a little bit of texture and make it make it look a little interesting. And it's a, just a really neat technique to watch how it dries. So let the background dry. Um, and then we're going to go in and we're going to paint everything except the bird. We're going to save the bird for very last, all right? All right, now that it's dry, um, we're gonna paint the leaves. So the leaves can be any color green you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna make mine, I really like this dark, this, um, I don't know, it's like a turquoise color. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that. Uh, now the only real rule is that I want them to be darker than my background because they're closer to us. And obviously, unlike the background, there is just a wee bit amount of detail. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that color again. That is green green and blue green and blue right here okay and I want it to be pretty pretty dark okay um you might need to experiment a little bit you know if, if you think it's too dark you can always add some water on the fly but I'm not gonna add a ton of water to mine because I want it to be kind of dark and actually I'm gonna do I'm going to add a little bit of value. Remember, value is the lightness or darkness of color. So I'm going to start with a dark color, and then I'm just going to add plain old water. Just plain old water to kind of dilute it to get kind of a value scale or, or a, a ombre. Ombre is one way to describe that. Uh, so I'm just going to start. I'm going to go right up here to this one, and I'm going to paint. See, yeah, nice and dark. I'm going to paint right along here, right along here. And before it dries, I'm going to very, very quickly add some water. I'm going to add some water and I'm going to push that around a little bit. Just like here. Add a little bit more right here. You know, I want it to 
to have some light and some dark and make it look like the sunlight's kind of bouncing around in there in the canopy of the trees where our little toucan lives, okay? So add right here, and I'm just kind of alternating between my color and my water. If you notice, I haven't changed my water yet. I probably won't change my water until I get to my bird. Um, let's add a little bit of, little bit of dark over here. Give it a little bit of definition standing, standing against our, our little dude. And then, of course, if you want, you can add some blooms in there, just a little, little flavor. All right, moving on. This one, I'm gonna have dark over here. All right, I'm being kind of careful now. Kind of careful, you can see I'm kind of taking my time along the, along the side there. Uh, again, just kind of alternating between paint, I had some paint, dark paint here in the middle, paint and water, like that. And just kind of moving it around right here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It looks like this half of the leaf is darker. I'm really liking that. So I'll add some dark paint over here. I'm gonna be kind of careful painting around my my bird, my toucan. All right, leaf number two. Let's get this one down here. Go along here. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, little bit of green. It's got a little bit of water in it from going back and forth, back and forth. Um, the color mixing, you know, some I, I do it pretty quick, but I've been doing it for a long time. It just takes practice. Um, there's such a thing as supply management. That's knowing how to use the supplies to your benefit. Um, just like when you're first learning to lift weights or exercise and you have to learn how to use the equipment properly, that there is no difference when it comes to painting. You've got to learn through uh, through instruction, like this video. And then if with art, you know, if, <laughs> if you make a mistake in the weight room, you could really hurt yourself. Um, but with art, it's there, there's a lot of room just to kind of experiment because you know if it doesn't work, you can just do another one. I mean, <laughs> you can just throw it away. And actually, this is my third toucan. So usually when I do these assignments um, for you all, I draw it two to three times. Sometimes if they're really complicated, I'll draw them more than that. Uh, just so I know where you could potentially have some problems. Uh, and the first couple weren't great weren't great. Uh, the third one was was way much, much better. And, and you know, that's because I did it three times. Now, I'm not saying you have to do this assignment three times, but if art is something that you enjoy and it is, it, and it you know, it's kind of a passion of yours, there's going to be a little bit of failure. And that is okay. That is absolutely okay. I can't tell you. I think I've told some of you this. I cannot tell you how many times I have had to chunk a canvas or wad up a sketch or, or restart a watercolor painting, you know, it just it, too many to count. I can't count that high. So again, I'm just kind of alternating between water and paint and you'll see it kind of makes these interesting little dark ridges and rivets in the leaves. We're just we're trucking along on this. Be careful around his little claws right down here. Here, let's add a little bit of water. Right here. And although I'm being somewhat careful around the edges, I'm not being careful in the middle at all. You can see I'm, I'm doing it quickly. Ooh, I like this. This is fun. Okay, and then we'll do this one right down here. Got two more. I need to make a little bit more. Whoop. See, that is a no-no. Do not do what Miss Hall did. I'm going to try to scoop it out. There we go. Oh, this one's a little more green. That's another thing, too. Sometimes you mix color and it's not exactly right. But the beautiful thing about pa painting plants and animals is they come in so many different ca color var variations that no one's going to look at your art and be like, those leaves are not the same color. It's just not going to happen. It's just I'm telling you, it's just not going to happen. All right, and we have one more. This brush is actually the perfect size for detail. 
it's a little small to do backgrounds, but yeah, as you can see, we, we got her done. All right, let's get this little. Okay. Sorry, I'm focusing. It's important. Super serious. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. I did that one kind of quick, and you can tell. Go clean up some of those edges. Boom! All right. I'm going to get my brush a rinse. Um, we are done with green. We're done with green. So because I'm working with a smaller palette, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it out. Uh, <clears throat> the next one, we're going to do the branch next. We're going to do the branch next. So I just I just wipe it like this. I get my paper towel. Um, I make sure that most of the color is up. Doesn't have to be spotless. Doesn't have to be spotless, but I don't necessarily want a whole bunch of green in my branch. So for the branch, what we're going to do is we're going to get brown right here. Oop, need a little bit of water. I'm st I'm still using my green water. We're gonna we'll 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 swippy swap that out when we start doing the bird. When we start doing the bird, okay. So I'm gonna make. Let's see. Let's make this interesting, shall we? Let's do some brown, okay. Uh, and I said we were done with the green. I lied. I lied. You can write a letter about that. Say Miss Hall lied to me. I want my money back. Uh, we're going to make kind of a green brown, kind of a green brown. So we're going to mix whoop, some green and some brown. And it, it makes kind of like a, well, I mean, it makes a really muddy color. But it darkens up our color a little bit. Oh, sorry. I'm going quickly. There we go. Just makes kind of a different type, different shade of brown to add. Because, again, if you look at a branch, I don't think I've ever seen a branch that was one completely solid, completely solid color without any little flex or 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 anything like that. Right. So now I'm just going to paint my branch. I'm going to use this lighter color along the top. So essentially, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint two strips, and I'm going to let it mix in between, and that'll kind of give us the shading or the sh or the shadow. So the light's coming from the top because uh, that's the sun is above us, and I'm going to make sure my brush has a water water on it. Get some brown, and I'm going to paint that brown color right along the top, and I'm going to do it in segments because I don't want it to dry. I don't want it to dry. Oh, I need to, let's just have the branch continue up there. Yeah, adapt and overcome. And before I let it dry, I'm going to paint that dark color underneath, okay? I'm going to paint that dark color underneath. And again, that dark color is just brown and green. And then I'm just going to kind of rough it up with my brush right where those two colors meet. Right where those two colors meet. And that gives us, add a little bit down here. A little more paint. I had a lot of water. That's going to give us the, that, sh it, I mean, it, it adds a little bit of depth to our painting. A little bit of depth to our painting. So I'm going to a little bit more here to especially right around the foot, you know, because he's he's grabbing it. Perfect, right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing, so paint the light brown on top and then that green brown that we did down below uh, on the rest of it. So right here, I'll do this segment and then I'll do this segment together. Right here. And then before it dries, Add that dark color, our green and our brown. Official art sound. Rinse, rinse. Light brown. Right here, get this little, and then our dark brown over here. I'll add a little bit of. Let's add a little bit more dark right around here just for a little flavor. Boom, all right, so now um, we're gonna move on to our bird. So I'm gonna wipe out my, <coughs> excuse me, my, my cap, my tray. 
And I'm going to go get some fresh water um, because we're actually going to paint the light parts of the bird first. Um, so, well, we're going to do it in stages. We're going to paint some yellow uh, and then we're going to do some black. And then to finish it out, we'll do some orange to, to give the bird a little bit of depth. So I'm going to go switch out my water um, and then we're going to get started on our bird. Okie dokie, let's paint the bird. So... This is one of those, kind of like where we had to let the background dry. We're going to have to let it dry. Sorry, I said that really fast. Um, we're going to paint a little bit of yellow in a couple of spots. Then we're going to let it dry. And then we're going to come back and do the black. And then we're going to let it dry. And then we're going to add orange, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and get a little bit of yellow on our palette. Again, it might be dry. You might have to add a little bit of water. I did. Okay. Add yellow. And I want a pretty, I want a pretty, a pretty dark yellow. I mean, I know yellow isn't a dark color, um, but I want it to have a lot of pigment, a lot of paint in there and not a lot of water. Uh, I want a solid wall, a solid wall of yellow. Actually, let's just do a whole beak. I changed my mind. That's the beautiful thing about these tutorials. So we're going to go ahead and just do the whole beak and this little portion right around their eyeball. Okay. Um, I was thinking as I was mixing the paint, I was like, well, let's, let's just dive in. All right, let's just dive in. So let's do the beak and then this portion around the eye. So here's what we need. We need yellow. We need orange, orange right here. Ready, ready, ready. And we're actually going to use a wee bit of red. A wee bit of red. Okay. I want that red. I want the red to have a little more water in it than those two. Okay. Because red, red can really overpower, especially the yellow. So here's how we're going to roll with this. We're going to start with yellow. Now we're going to need to move kind of quickly. So, it, it, you know, I would recommend kind of wa maybe watching this part since you're at a good stopping point, watching it and then going back through and doing it with me a second time. Um, I always have a lot more success doing that. So I'm going to take my brush and we're working on the beak right now. And I'm going to start with yellow. Oop, I had a little, I had too much water on my brush. Make sure it's nice, nice and bright. And I'm going to paint the entire top part yellow okay the entire top part yellow so like here this part right down here is gonna be black and actually we'll just paint the whole thing yellow we got to move quick because i don't want it to dry i don't want it to dry right here yeah 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 Ooh, that yellow looks good with that green i like it that's some yellow right here okay bada bing Bada bing. All right. So the Toucan's beak um, has, it, it, it kind of goes from light to dark. So we're going to very quickly, very quickly add a little bit of orange. So right on top of that, of that color, that's um, that yellow, while it is still wet. Again, this is called wet on wet technique. Um, we're going to add a little bit of orange and we're just kind of, kind of move it around. Let it mix. Let it, let it gel. Okay. And we're going to do that all throughout the bottom, okay? This does a couple of things. One, it prevents us, we're essentially mixing it on the paper, if you've noticed. We're mixing it on the paper. So we didn't have to make a ton of little puddles. Um, you do want it to be a darker orange down towards the bottom. So make sure that you're putting it on there a little bit thicker down towards the bottom. Uh, just like that. Perfect, perfect. And then the final, final, final touch is some red. So right along this bottom part of the beak, we're going to add a little bit of red. Oops, I need it to you have a little bit more paint in there. Okay, and it's going to mix right away because this is still, this has still got, got a lot of water. So I'm going to add a little bit of red, just kind of a line. Then I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to kind of help that help that mix. Okay. You can add a little bit more, right? I'm going to add even a little bit more, have that red go, go up a little higher. Yeah. And it should be the darkest right along the bottom part of the beak. Okay. Right along the bottom part of the beak. It should be the lightest, but you can kind of help that red go all the way up. 
Yeah, ooh, yeah. Okay, so the darkest part of the, the beak should be towards the bottom. Now they do have these kind of lines that run through the beak. Um, since we are going for a little more realistic, I'm gonna go ahead and do those. Now I know it is still wet and that is absolutely okay. I'm gonna make sure that the red, I'm gonna use red. I'm gonna mix just a wee bit of orange. See how I just kind of merge those? Little bit of orange to make it a little more orangey. And then starting from the very bottom where I did my dark color, and if you notice how I'm holding my brush, I'm gonna do these, they're, they're just curvy lines, okay? They're just curvy lines. Just curvy lines. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so I'm gonna help these down. I'm gonna add a little bit more red right to the bottom to kind of connect those to our curlies. To kind of connect them to our curlies. Bam! Oh, okay, that's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. And right over here on the eyeball, I'm, I'm essentially gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna start with yellow. I have that down. And I'm working in this circle that's outside of our eye. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. Right here. Just like that. Ba, 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 ba. Then I'm gonna go straight to orange. Add a little bit of orange right around the eye. Right here. And I'm just kind of helping it mix, helping it mix. Helping it mix. And then we're just gonna do a touch of red, a touch of red just to add a little bit like, um, I don't know, just kind of make it look like the dark part under the eye. Just a little bit of red. And I am, t I don't know if you can tell, I am touching so, so lightly. So, so lightly on my, on my painting. Okay, I'm actually gonna get a little bit of yellow to clean this up up here. Lighten it up a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now, and actually, so this part here is gonna be white. This part here is gonna be white, okay? This part here, sorry, I've got one spot that's bugging me a little bit. I'm gonna mix that out. That line is a little harsh, right? That line is a little harsh. If you go back over those harsh lines with a little bit of paint on and a little bit of water on your brush, It'll fix those harsh lines. See that? Now it's a little smoother. Uh, I'm not going to do any blooms on the beak. I want the beak to. St I want the beak to chill. I want the beak to stay like it is. Um, so again, this is white right here. This is white right here. Now I'm going to add. I know it probably sounds a little weird, but I'm going to add a little bit of yellow right around here to give it a little depth. Um, because although the feathers are white, when the sunlight hits them, they'll sometimes pick up just a little bit of yellow. Um, so I'm going to take yellow, and this is going to have a ton of water. I'm talking like mostly water and right around where the beak meets the, the, I don't know, the head or the neck. I'm going to add just a little, a little bit of yellow. In fact, if I added water, it's, it doesn't even, it, I don't even have enough paint on here to paint this whole area. It's just, you can see just a little bit of a glow right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing right down here, right down here on these tail feathers. Just a little, it's just like a glow. It's just a little bit of a glow. Right here. All right, so we need to let that dry because we're gonna add black, okay? We're gonna add black next and then we're gonna add a little bit of blue right down here. Um, so we have to make sure, especially right here on the beak and the eye, that it is dry because if it is not and you touch black paint up against that yellow, it's gonna spread all the way throughout this beautiful beak that we just painted together. Um, so make sure it's dry. Be patient, use your hair dryer carefully, uh, but it needs to dry. So I'm gonna let mine dry. Um, the next color we're gonna need, we're gonna need black, blue, and you know what? We're gonna use that purple. I wanna use all the colors on our palette this time. So you need black, blue, and purple. So if you haven't used those in a while, you might add a little bit of water while you wait for this to dry, um, and then we'll get started. Okay, we are dry. So we are ready to finish this guy out by adding the dark color. So again, we're gonna use a little black, a little blue, and a little purple. Um, I've already kind of wiped out my tray here. It's not as important because we're gonna be dealing with a really, really dark color. So it's not perfectly clean, but it's good enough. So I'm gonna start 
by getting a little bit of black. Black goes a very long way. So please be careful, please be careful. Um, there are a couple of spots that we're going to want like a midnight black, but the rest we're going to kind of want like some, some different sh uh, values of black and gray and blue. All right. So I'm going to mix it pretty dark, pretty dark. I'm going to rinse my brush and then I'm going to get a wee bit of blue. We're going to use some blue for highlights right here. And then finally a wee bit of purple. Okay. Um, let's start with the darkest spots first. Um, so there's really only three, three spots, yeah, three, that are going to be the, like the super dark, um, like the midnight black, and that's the spots in the beak and then the pupil of the eye. So I'm gonna take my brush, I've got my towel here. I don't want a ton of water on my brush because I want this to be pretty dark. And right here on the end of, the beak we are going to paint black all right so i'm being a little more careful than i have in the past only because once the black is on the paper there there's not a lot you can do to get it up um other than uh other than you know paint over it paint white so i got a little bit there then we've got these two right here okay Taking my time. This part is a little bit of precision work. Okay, this small brush is perfect for that. So let's get this bottom part right here. Whoop. Right here. All right. Just like that. I'm gonna kind of clean that up a little bit. Make sure it's nice and crisp, bam, bam, bam. And then right in the eye. So if you remember, I left a little white spot right kind of above the pupil. That's gonna stay white and that's gonna kind of be the, um, well, no, not kind of, that's gonna be the reflection in the eye. All right, so once I've got that done, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna start painting from the back of the bird up because I want that to dry. But by the time we add some color throughout here, um, it'll be dry. So then we can then we can go straight 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 up straight you know butt butt straight up against it. And it won't and it won't be bad. Uh, so I'm gonna want to add a little bit of water to my black paint because I don't want a midnight black for the bird because I'm going to use, um, I want to use different values throughout. And I'm going to start by just laying in some color. So I'm, I'm going to avoid the head for right now, kind of start here. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in a little bit of black, okay? But then I'm going to put in a little bit of purple and I'm going to kind of mix that together. So kind of like I did with the background, uh, right with those different colors, I'm gonna mix, make it a little darker, mix some black and a little bit of purple, okay? A little bit of purple. So right now, I'm only kind of paying attention um, to the shape, only kind of, uh, just generally so here in a second I don't completely cover it up. Um, add a little bit here. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue little bit of blue, add a little water. It was a little too much, a little too much, right? Let's get some black right up here. Okay, fill it in. Make this part a little darker right here because it's kind of underneath that wing. So let me get a little darker. Uh, and then right, don't forget the tail. So we're gonna leave this part white, you know, with that little bit of yellow we added. But we need to paint that tail underneath. And go right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oop, I'm going a little fast down here. I need to slow down. Right here, right here, right here. Bam. Bam. Okay. Let's keep on trucking. This back here is going to be even darker. So just a little less water to kind of show the different different layers that we've got got working. All right, I need to go up here and add a little bit of water. I don't like that line, so I just added just, just plain of water. I'm gonna darken up my black just a wee bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple, and I'm actually gonna mix it with a little bit of black. Oh yeah, 
See, like that purple just works so well to, to make the color a little more interesting, okay? A little more interesting. Let's darken that up just a bit, okay? Now, before I, I'm gonna add a little bit of water up here so it doesn't dry before I get to it. Um, I can still see the outline of my wing, okay? And what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want a pretty dark black color and right along where that wing kind of sets on the body, I wanna add some dark, okay? I wanna add a little bit of dark color and I wanna carry that dark color up through the wing, all right? Sorry, I need to make it darker, darker, darker. So I kind of lied, we are using it darker. And I'm gonna do some really dark black lines to kind of show the feathers. I'm gonna go kind of <coughs> over some of the wing parts a little bit. I'm, I'm essentially kind of tracing over my pencil, but with a lot of dark paint on there, okay? With a lot of dark paint on there. That'll give us some definition and it'll mix. I mean, I'm still painting on a wet surface. So you can see it's it's mixing around on there, but that is absolutely okay. Cause we're just kind of, we're just doing feathers. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Add a little bit more dark color. Woo, Got a lot on my brush. A little bit more right down here. I'm gonna darken it up just a, just a, just a hair. And see, I like how it's uneven right? It, it's kind of showing that there's some interesting things happening there with the feathers. It's like detail without painting detail. I love it. And I'm going to darken this up just a hair right here too, right along the, right along the chest. Mix it with that purple that we added. All right, now we're going to work up the head. This should be dry now. If it's not, um, then just wait a moment. Yeah, I mean, you, it's not going to get ruined if it does dry. So I'm gonna go right up here. I'm being kind of careful, right? Kind of careful, got a little bit of precision work we gotta do. I'm gonna add just a touch of blue to it in here, mix it, mix it around. Yeah, see that blue shine through? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let me make, make my black a little bit darker. And I want it just a little bit darker right around the eye. So I'll paint with a little bit of black and then I'll go in and add a little water to kind of diffuse it. Now I don't want it as dark as this right here, otherwise we won't be able to see the difference, right? Um, just kind of light it right, right along the eye. Bada bing, bada bing. Yeah, ooh, this is turning out good, y'all. All right, we've gotta do um, the colorful part of the eye. It's kind of like a blue-gray, and it's actually the same color that we're gonna do down here in the feet. Um, so to make a blue-gray, we're gonna mix black and blue, and it's just gonna have a little bit more water on it. So I've got my colors, colors gelling right down here. I'm just gonna kinda fill the gap between the blue and the black. And you'll see it makes kind of a, it makes a lovely little dusty kind of, um, kind of gray color. Yeah, ooh, okay. Hold on, I want it a little darker. Ooh, yeah, there we go. All right, and this is the color that we're gonna paint the colorful part of the eye and the feet. So I'm gonna start up here. It's a little dark. It needs to, yeah, right there. It needs to be kind of light. It shouldn't have a ton, a ton of color. Just kind of the indication of a little bit of blue and a little bit of gray in the eye. Now the feet can be a little darker right down here. They can be a little darker. So I'm gonna paint those in that very, very, ooh, that's such a pretty color. I love that blue color right down here. Rinse and repeat on the other claw. Shapa, shapa, shapa. Official painting noises. Shapa, shapa, shapa. Boom. And actually right down here too, I'm gonna add just a touch of black right along the bottom. Okay, right along the bottom. So I'm just kind of touching and tapping and right along the bottom of the elbow too and where it meets with the body. I mean, just kind of think about shadows that are formed when things meet up. 
Uh, the last thing we have are just a couple of finishing touches, y'all. We're, we're done, man. Uh, we're going to, we need to paint the veins in the leaves. Uh, and actually, we're just going to use this really nice blue-gray color. Um, I'm going to add just a touch, a touch of green in it to tie it in. Okay, but I want a dark, I want a dark color, just like here. Yeah, okay. And then just right over where my pencil was, I'm going to add the lines for the leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, swoop. Another official art term. Ha ha! And that, oh, I got a little bit of black down here. It's okay, because my I had my hand down here. Here, I will clean that up, though. Sorry, that's going to bother me. There we go. There we go. Um, once you are done with your toucan, um, you need to sign it. You need to sign it. So I'm going to sign mine. Artists historically have signed their paintings in the bottom right hand corner, but there aren't any real like serious rules. Uh, so, but I'm, I mean, I'm going to follow the rules. I'm going to sign, like many of you know, I sign my art with a K and a T, which is a play on my name. And we are done. Hey, I hope, I hope you guys really like this. I had a lot of fun painting it. It's kind of, it kind of turned out to be a neat painting. Um, so this is one of two. We'll do, we are going to do a land animal and a sea animal. Like I, like I told you in the message from, uh, on Monday. Um, and this is the land or air animal. Uh, so the next assignment, which will be up very, very soon is going to be a sea animal. Get to work and I hope you have a good day.